Hello, welcome to this video on tone slash voice in narratives. And I hope this doesn't come across as self-serving. Often I hear as, uh, as an English professor, what did the author mean? What did the author mean? Oh, I don't know, I'm not the author. Okay, so how do I know what the author meant? Or how do I know what tone the author used? Well, I can look at the textual evidence in any particular thing. But in this video, I'm actually going to talk about the tone slash voice that I used in three of my books. This doesn't meant to be self-serving, but more of the, the, the idea that, hey, wouldn't it be nice if you actually had an author tell you about that? So let's just make a quick little understanding of how that is different from point of view. How is tone and voice different from point of view? Well, tone and voice is basically going to be defined a certain way. Now, you look at this picture here, it's like, okay, someone's screaming at somebody, okay? For me, when I hear tone of voice, it's like, don't use that tone of voice with me. Okay, it's kind of like, how are you speaking to somebody? What, you know, whatever, but how's that defined? Well, there's a great definition, which is um, that the way that a narrator speaks to the reader in passages of exposition and backstory is sometimes called the voice of the story. You can also hear that be called the tone. And how do they do this? Well, in every work of fiction, narrators are distinguished by the way they form sentences, the words that they choose, and the way... <laughs> They psychologically react to the events of the plot. We're talking about the narrator. The narrator is not the same necessarily as the writer. The narrator of the story. So if you're talking about a first person, something that's written in first person, the narrator is going to be the main character inside that character's head. And how are they reacting to things? And how are they talking about it? If it's a teenager, are they being bratty about it? Are they being depressed about it or whatever? If we have a third person narrator, whether omniscient or limited, how are they describing the scene? Um, and how are things, whatever, what words are they choosing to describe what's happening? Often the narrator is the third person, they do only, they're not a character per se, but they're narrating what is happening. So let's talk about three different books and the tone and voice that was used. So the first book that we're gonna talk about is Darker the Shadow. And this is the latest book that I wrote. And I wrote it, um, a full blown book based on a short story I had written. Um, called The Howler King. And in doing so, this is very much a, uh, a fantasy book, which is set in medieval times in a made up land. The tone of voice that the narrator is used, this uses third person limited, is told from the point of view of four main characters. And each character has a different take on what is going on in the world around them. So in this particular example, um, one of the main characters name is Pender, he, is going to have a different view of the world and the events that are happening around him as opposed to Danla, who's another one of the characters, where she is going to maybe experience and their stories overlap and they interact with each other and stuff like that. And in doing so, you can get a different take of the overall picture. This is a very much a plot-driven uh, story, even though the characters are very defined. But each character has their own set of unique insights on things. And so by telling the same story, not really the same story, but it's their part of the bigger story from their point of view and how they perceive things and how they react to it gives a broader sense of overall what's happening. So that was by design and it's um, it's been very challenging. It was very challenging to write and the sequel I'm working on right now, which is uh, Stronger the Barrier, is, uh, is this continued work in progress. So that's one example, okay? Now we shift over to another book I wrote called Bring Down the Rain. This book is uh, written in first person, takes place in the late 1980s, and it's written from the main character's point of view. His name is Derek. Uh, so at this point of view, this is a guy who is was destined to be a, a great baseball player, gets into an accident right before his senior year. Um, the accident kills his father. He and his mother then move from North Carolina to Utah, where he's going to have his senior year. So his whole life is basically turned upside down. So it's told that the tone of voice is basically from a, a teenager who is in a place he doesn't want to be, uh, having to deal with a life that he didn't want or didn't expect, and how he's reacting to a completely different environment and the idea that he has to figure out something to do with his life. So that's the tone that is approached, even though it's written from first person. And the last example, which was a lot of fun to write, but also a big challenge, was uh, The Mirror of the Soul. And the story backstory behind this one is there is an author, there's a, actually not an author, uh, he is a musician called Christa Berg. He's most famous in America for his song uh, Lady in Red, uh, which is a hit back in the 80s. Uh, he continued to, to make music um, and that's toured all over the world. 
Um, and in 2004 or six, I can't remember which it was, he wrote a song and um, it's called The Mirror of the Soul. And the song was so beautiful and epic and it touched me on, on such a, a level that I um, wrote a book based on it. And I actually contacted Christopher's management and got all the official legal stuff, I actually worked with Chris on the ideas in writing this book. And this book, it says based on the songs of Krista Berg. So it's hard to write a whole novel based on one, you know, one particular song. So I actually listened to his whole catalog of music and I've interwove many of his different songs um, into this book. And Krista Berg has a very particular uh, tone and a voice when he writes his songs. Um, even though his songs have different, you know, they're, they're, some are ballads, some are, you know, more uh, story kind of elements or stuff like this, but he has a very particular way. As I listened to his music over and over, I had to this, and so I tried to, my best to emulate his voice and tone in writing The Mirror of the Soul, and uh, he was happy with the outcome, and so are those who are his fans who read it and enjoyed it. So this was an example of me playing around with tone and voice, uh, one that wasn't my own, um, trying to, it, was, you know, it wasn't copying, it was imitation, it wasn't imitation, it was, it was uh, you know, I don't know, homage, I guess. So those are three uh, examples um, from an author who's written three different books and how the author perceives how they wrote books, meaning me, um, with different tones and why those tones were appropriate for those particular works. So something to think about when you think about writing your own books and your own stories of what tone of voice you want to take and how that does need to be considered. Um, it's more than just point of view. All right, there you go.